Welcome everybody, it is the finals of Pokemon Perfect's ADV Open 1 in 2021. You saw both of these players' semi-final sets on the channel. If you didn't, they are both absolutely worth watching in their own right. And here we are with Johnny G and Mikmer playing for the championship. Both of these players, by getting here, no matter what happens, are qualified for the ADV Championship Tour at the end of the year. The question is who gets the first place title and the bragging rights and the points and all the glory that comes with this prestigious event. Might be overhyping it a little bit, but I am very excited about this match. It is two high-level up-and-coming players. I mean, if you can even call them that anymore. I think if you're familiar with current ADV, you're going to be more and more familiar with both of these guys. They both very well may find themselves in Kalos Invitational 5 in one capacity or another. And these are very much players that maybe you're not so familiar with now, but these are guys to watch. These are guys you're going to be familiar with sooner rather than later because they're both really good. So here is Game 1 in their championship, best of three. Johnny's on the bottom, Mikmer's on the top. We've got a Metagross and a Zapdos, respectively, becomes a doll. There's BP. Nothing you can really do there. Maybe like a Crunch Pursuit Tower for a trap, but like even then, you run into if the Clay Doll's faster, it can just Earthquake you, and maybe it's a two hit KO with like the fast Adamant Doll that people run these days. There wasn't really a good trap to be had there. And it's kind of all for naught. The explosion is going to break up the Baton Pass shenanigans. Leaves us in a quick 5-5. Five to five. Zapdos and Gengar come in. Gengar was unrevealed up to this point. Going to go for agility now after eating an ice punch. Doesn't look like it'll live another. But Zapdos, of course, is faster now and can pass that. And that's what he's going to do. And it's going to be yet another boom. That's a pretty hefty boom. 50% on a Swampert. That's going to be not the world's bulkiest pert. Some kind of off pert, I would think, in order to be doing that amount of damage. But nevertheless, they are both going to switch, and we end up with Legendary Bird on Legendary Bird. And Zapdos, actually, is going to be the one that gets out of the way. Despite probably being faster than Moltres and being able to cook it with Thunderbolt, he's still going to switch. Starmie eats a Fire Blast. A lot of pivoting here for Mikmer. Not sure what he was trying to catch. I guess the Coon there, but he ends up with this matchup. Doug Trio on Lax. And, yeah, Return is just going to insta-kill him from 100%. Dugtrio is not meant to take hits like that, and indeed, down he goes. There's Earthquake, again, 29%. Feels kind of like a high amount. I feel like this is some kind of offensive coon, or sorry, offensive pert. Uh, it's going to be a Hydro Pump crit there, which does matter a little bit through the Combine. That obviously would have done way, way less otherwise. There's the Surf and the EQ, respectively. Kuhn very low, but he's faster here, and he would kill for sure with a Surf, but he doesn't want to Surf into the Celebi or into the Starmie, so he's going to go for Rest, and Mikmer going to stay in and go for the EQ. He did not go to one of his two Water Resists that he has. Sleep Talk is going to whiff on Rest, but we now know that we're looking at a Crow Kuhn here, and that's going to make Mikmer feel less safe about staying in, even though he has continued to do that over and over. And finally, it catches up with them. There's an irrelevant crit found with Surf in the sleep. Down goes Swampert, and the lead again for Johnny G, now 4-3. to three. Here comes Claydol, blinking on the lead Zapdos Thunderbolt. Even if it does have Hidden Power, Grass, or Ice, it will not kill here, but it actually a crit would have been enough. So it's obviously not the world's most defensive doll. It's got to be a, a doll on the offensive side. If this is an off-star, it is a legit threat here. Uh, and we haven't seen anything from it. But yeah, an off-star here with Thunderbolt would be a huge issue for the Coon. Hydro Pump would outspeed and one-hit KO the Moltres. Uh, all Mikmer would have to do is find a way to kill the Lax. And then an off-star would clean up Johnny here. Of course, if it's not an off-star, like if we're looking at like the T-Wave bulky star, for example, that is a whole different matter. There's Thunderbolt, which is not exclusively found on Offstar, but it's kind of a, a tip-off that we're looking at in Offstar here. But the key with the sun happening here is that Hydro Pump would not kill the Lax anymore. And I'm kind of surprised that Mikmer allowed that, but maybe he felt like he couldn't outstall the sun, and he may be correct. And there is the self-destruct to end the game. So that's Sunny Day as a defensive tool for Johnny G. 
actually probably ended up winning him the game because if the Sun weren't there and Ostar has a great chance to clean it up, assuming he can hit his hydro pumps, and I think Johnny actually would have lost this game. So getting that sunny day off to reduce the damage from the hydro pump actually, I think, ended up being the deciding factor here. And Johnny going to take down game one, a close game one, to be sure. But nevertheless, Johnny takes it down. He's going to be one game away now from being the champion of the ADV Open, the first ADV Open of Pokemon Perfect's 2021 season. But as it has been up to this point, it is a best of three. Mikmur, obviously, after 2 owing Roro in the previous round, is more than capable of making a comeback. Let's see if he can do that. Here is the second game. Players in the same positions as before. We've got more shininess coming from Johnny G. He's got a Salamence lead this time. Mikmur on the other side has a meta. Neither one comfy with the matchup. And we end up with the bulky, bold T-Wave Starmie that I'm a big fan of as well. Against Fori on the bottom, which went for HP Bug. He's now going to get spikes down. There's Rapid Spin. And there's HP Bug yet again, fishing for a crit, which may or may not kill, depending on the damage roll. But there is no sand right now, so it would have to be a really good roll. He can't inch him out with the sand. Gengar does switch in on Rapid Spin, but does he have a follow-up play? Yeah, he doesn't want to get himself paralyzed. He gets out of there. And good pivoting for Johnny. He's now going to switch T-Tar in on a Rapid Spin. Great opportunity here if he's a Crunch Pursuit Tar to do big damage to the Starmie. But he's going to scout even further. A lot of players would have stayed in and gone for Crunch there. And indeed, it would have resulted in a dead Starmie. But no, he's going to stick it out. And it's a T-Wave connecting with Bliss. So Johnny has pivoted quite a bit. He has managed to negate quite a bit of damage on the other side. However, he's shown five of his six Mons. And he has not been able to get Spikes to stick. The Starmie's been a real prick for him. And he may have to play this game without Hazards. We'll see. Here's Meta, shown to have lefties for Mikmur. In comes Swampert, so full team revealed for Johnny. That hidden power is not grass, looking like HP Fire from a mixed meta here. And it's going to be a switch to Starmie. That's going to take an EQ okay-ish, 41%. Starmie should be able to recover that off. And that is what happens here as the 4 switches in. We're back to this matchup yet again. This time, however, the crucial difference is that a crit will almost always kill the Starmie because there is sand in play this time. So there is great incentive here for Johnny to fish for that critical hit. And another reason to stay in here and keep HP bugging here is because he's gaining lefties back this whole time. So by doing this, not only is he giving himself an opportunity to get a crit which would kill the Starmie with the aid of the sand, but additionally... Uh, he has the ability to heal up his Fori that was previously at 60-something percent, but he's inching all the way back up to full health here. In fact, next turn after lefties, he'll be where he needs to be. But he pulls it back here, and it's going to be the T-Tar switching in. Last time he didn't like it, maybe he sees it differently now. Surf comes up well short. However, Crunch does not get the Starmie as it would in a lot of cases. Perhaps this Starmie's got some special defense as well. And that's going to change the dynamic here. That's going to force Johnny out. He's obviously slower than the Starmie. Gengar comes in on a Surf, takes it reasonably. A previously unrevealed Regice comes in. 23 turns in for Mikmur. He is just now only showing his third Pokemon, whereas Johnny's full cards have been on the table for quite some time. Mikmur definitely with the information advantage here. So the fact that we are looking at... I think this is actually the exact same team that Mikmur used in the previous round against Roro. Yeah, there's the Ludicolo as well. I believe this is the exact same team that Mikmur had used previously. Obviously, he has faith in it. He beat a great player like Roro with it. So he, I guess he's looking at it like if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I wonder if Johnny had watched the series on YouTube and now knows, maybe with the revelation of Regice, but certainly now with the revelation of Ludicolo, I wonder if Johnny now knows exactly what he's up against. I don't know how often he watches my YouTube channel or if he has scouted Mikmur or whatever. I think the replays were private, though, so I think he would have had to have seen it uh, either in the Pokemon Perfect thread or here on my YouTube channel. But it is definitely possible that at this point, Johnny knows what he's playing against. Here's Fori and Meta. We think that Meta has HP Fire, so I think Fori does not want to stick around for that. Here comes Swampert, and there is the HP Fire, which is very little. There might be a Psychic or a Boom coming. It's actually a double from Johnny, and Mikmur snipes it. 
He calls that one no problem. Goes for HP Fire a second time in a row, trying to catch Johnny on the double. And down goes the 4 -E. He does not manage to get any spikes to stick in this game. That bulky Starmie never found the crit. And he just rapid spun it away, even though there was a Gengar there to, in theory, protect spikes. Now, granted, the Starmie, as of right now, is at 10%. That's pretty low. It's going to maybe have to be careful sneaking in. If it gets hit by anything on the way in, that's bad news bears. Uh, but the main purpose of the Starmie, it could do other things, too. It could be a real prick for the Blissey, for the Swampert, etc. A lot of utility. Uh, but as a spinner, which is the main purpose of the Starmie, it's already done its job. And he's going to sneak in here for free, actually. Mikmur's going to get a free recover off. And there is nothing that Johnny can do to prevent that. That Starmie is in the clear. It goes in one turn or a turn and a half, however you want to look at it, from 10%. All the way to 98%. So crisis averted and clear advantage for Mikmer here. 6-5 to five lead and no spikes in sight for Johnny G. Gonna have to find a way to close out this game with not super offensive mons either. I mean, the Gengar, but it looks like a bulky Gar. The T-Tar, but I think it's all, all special or maybe it randomly has Brick Break or something, but I don't see that mattering. I'm not sure what closes it out. I think it's going to have to be the Salamence here, but it hasn't shown anything. We don't know if we're looking at a Band Mens or a Mixed Mens. I mean, it could be a, a DD Mens, but that'd be a weird lead. I mean, wouldn't you just lead t -tar at that point, I would think? So I'm thinking it's either a Mixed or a CB Mens. But yeah, Mikmur with the clear advantage in this situation. Johnny going to be hard-pressed to make a comeback, but... Not over just yet. Fire Blast there with a critical hit opportunity would have killed the Reg Ice, but it does not come. Retaliatory Ice Beam, that does kill, obviously from 14%. And Mikmer furthers his lead. He's looking to send us to a Game 3 here. He's got that 6-4 advantage right now, and he still has two unknown pokes. But like I said, Johnny might know what they are from having seen this team before. Ludicolo with Swift Swim is going to outspeed the Salamence now. Going to go for the Ice Beam. Good thing Johnny did not get greedy there. Ice Beam would have ended that Salamence on the spot. And Ludicolo busting out the Leech Seed to be that much more obnoxious against the Bliss. Surf there with a crit opportunity. Had he found a crit there, Swampert would have been insta-killed. But it didn't come and the Wish negated the damage. Swampert lives to fight another day. The rain finally wears off, but Mikmur gets the obnoxious Leech Seed off yet again. We're looking at what seems to be a non-status Bliss. I believe it's Ice Beam last move, so it can't threaten the Ludicolo with something it hates, like Thunder Wave or Toxic, which would be clutch in this situation. Johnny finally gets a little bit of ground back. He gets the Will-O-Wisp on the meta, and he doesn't go for the Pursuit. An unusual play for Mikmur. He actually switches the Starmie into the Thunderbolt here, and he loses the Starmie in exchange for a Thunder Wave. That seems like a little bit of a choke for Mikmur, but he wasn't comfortable going for the Gar kill here. Now he goes for the Pursuit, and even on the switch out, it is an underwhelming 48%. The meta still burnt here. That Gengar could be an issue, especially if Johnny is able to find an opportunity to pass a wish to it. And what looks to be a CB Mens is going to get the hidden power off and kill Regis. And just like that, Johnny's back in the game. These pursuits are so underwhelming. They're non-stab pursuits from meta. Going to do 29% from to a CB Mens on the way out. That is just not that good. That's why I don't view meta as a reliable Gengar remover or just as a reliable pursuit user in general because the pursuits are so underwhelming even on the things that you want to hit like a CB Mens or like a Gengar. And the burn is making this meta suffer. The pivoting switching from both of them continuing still two hidden pokes from Mikmur in the back and yet another leech seed connecting with Blissey and mooching off her ginormous health pool here's the meta once again it is still suffering from that burn it's down to just 16 percent and Johnny does not respect the possibility of a boom he thinks it's an all special I mean, he might be right. We don't know the last move. It could just be Psychic or Thunder Punch or something along those lines. Probably Psychic. It might not be Boom. And now Dugtrio is going to sneak in on an Earthquake. It gets bopped for 97%, but it hangs on by the skin of its moly teeth and gets that Leech Seed back to stay alive. Mikmur still with a hidden poke in the back. 75 turns in, and once again, the Blissey is the, re the target.
the receiver of that leech seed. Metagross foddered off here, and now Johnny somehow has come back to get himself a lead. He's going to Dug Trio now, which should kill, and does. So there's the Earthquake, so the lead was short-lived. We've got ourselves a 3-3, three to three, but now we've got a CB Mens ready to go wild, and Mikmur does not seem to have a great answer. It's Last Poke Lax here is what he's going to try to get it done with, and he goes for Curse, but the fact that he's got the Pursuit user... Doesn't that indicate that it's a, a lax that can't actually touch the Gengar? I believe, if I recall from memory, in the semifinal set, assuming he did not change the team in any way, I believe it is a Curse Body Slam Earthquake Rest Lax. And if that is correct, then this Gengar, even though we can't pass a wish to it anymore, this Gengar is invincible against that Lax. And that is not where Mikmur wants to be. I'm not sure how Johnny made this comeback. It felt like Mikmur was quite a ways ahead not all that long ago. But Johnny has managed to do it, and Mikmur now is not in great shape shape if Mikmur now doesn't find a way to make the comeback and close out this game it's going to be a 2-0 victory for what would be the champion Johnny G as opposed to going to a winner takes all game three which is what it was looking like for a hot minute but now it is not so clear we've got a tight late game here rain dance coming down earthquake coming down there's leech seed and burn going on Ludicolo at 18% Great opportunity to kill the Gar there, but he can't pull the trigger. He mispredicts and goes Ice Beam instead of Surf. Surf would have gotten it there. The reason he didn't go Ice Beam, or the reason he did go Ice Beam instead of Surf, is because he didn't want the Salamence to come in on the Surf and resist it. So that was just a prediction game, and Mikmur was not correct, and Ludicolo will succumb to its burn now. That's going to leave us with a Lax against two, but of note, among those two is not... Gengar. Gengar was, I believe, invincible against this Lax. Johnny evidently did not know that information, and now it's going to be RNG heavy. Oh, and an anticlimactic finish here. Mikmur is actually going to time out. I see his timer slowly going down all the way from 20 seconds. 20, 15, 10, 5, out of here. I don't know if he had an issue with his internet or if this was a lag thing or if he just wasn't aware of his timer. I'm truly unclear and that just, oh, that makes it really, really awkward here. Um, I'm not clear how this would have played out. I think that it's another brick break obviously and let's just assume that it does not crit because obviously he just wins the game on the spot if it crits. If it does comparable damage to last time, which was, let's see, 46%. Uh, so that would leave the lax at 14%. He would lefties up to 20% after body slamming. And then I really and truly don't know what the calc is against the Swampert from 20% with a defense boost. I don't know if Earthquake gets him there or not, or if it's a roll, or if there's a chance to get him there. I think that it just depends at that point. Uh, the Lax could get a rest off against the Pert, and then the Pert would have to find Earthquake crits pretty quickly. Uh, we also don't know the last move on this Pert. Uh, it could be Roar, it could be Refresh, it could be Hydro Pump. If it's Hydro Pump, this is even more interesting. Uh, if it is a non-attacking move, such as Roar or Refresh, then I think that Johnny might actually have a problem if the Lax were to get a rest off, because he would only have four Earthquakes left, and he would have to get a crit. Otherwise, the only attacking move he would have any PP remaining for is Ice Beam, which simply wouldn't be enough unless he froze the Lax basically immediately, and it just never, ever, ever thawed out. Uh, so that timeout very well could have mattered. Hard to say. Like I said, I don't know the exact sets or EVs or whatever. We don't know the last move for Swampert. If it's Hydro Pump, it's a little more interesting. If it's not Hydro Pump, then maybe Mikmur actually was going to win this game. It's tricky. Uh, but time management is part of the game. It is unfortunate that it ended in this way. This game was really close. I would have liked to have seen it played out properly. But timeout wins are legitimate wins. I mean, Mikmur and Johnny seem to have a conversation immediately after the game, so this does not appear to be a disconnect situation. This appears to just be lag or Mikmur not clicking on time or not good enough time management or whatever it may be. 
Uh, but the results of this are going to stand, and therefore it's going to be a Johnny G 2-0 victory over Mikmer. Both of these players qualifying for the Pokemon Perfect ADV Championship toward the end of the year, but only one player is going to be the winner of this tournament, and like I said, that is Johnny G, who has looked like an absolute force to be reckoned with as of late. ADV fans, keep an eye on this player. He is the real deal, and don't sleep on Mikmer either. He's really coming into his own. He had a great 2-0 victory in the previous round over the legend himself, McMagan. I hope you guys have enjoyed this coverage of Pokemon Perfect's ADV Open 1. We have seven ADV Opens planned for this year. There's going to be a lot of great content to watch on this channel. If you enjoy this kind of content, please do just leave me a thumbs up. It really supports me and supports the channel. Leave a comment. Let me know the kind of stuff you want to see on the future of this channel and what else you might want to add about this series. I miss stuff all the time. Go ahead and correct me. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.